<laughs> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shape the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime to hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dim, and every fair from fair sometimes declines, by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest, nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant's faithful, 100%. This is the kind of stuff that goes on in my brain all the time. It is chaos. And tonight, I'm going to share some of the nonsense that I think with you, so hopefully you can enjoy it. Uh, werewolves are killed by silver bullets. The Lone Ranger uses silver bullets. Ergo, the Lone Ranger has seen some stuff. <laughs> Where was that episode? When I was a kid growing up, coming home from school, channel surfing, watching stuff. Like, anytime I saw a black and white show, I'd just go on past it. If I knew it was cowboys and werewolves, I'd have watched. They missed an opportunity. You know, there's nothing that says that you can't go through a drive through lane in reverse. In fact, if you have a passenger there, it makes more sense. They can make the order, they can pay, they can get the food, and you can keep your hands on the wheels. You know, it's safer. As long as you don't count the heart attack you're giving to the person at the drive through window as they see a car come backing up and they're not expecting it. But you know what? Your safety is your priority there. You know, like, you can't be concerned about other people like that. The last woman I dated called me a wild man. <laughs> In that I have the same social skills as someone who was raised by wolves and has no idea how to deal with humanity in any way, shape, or form. She's not wrong. You may look at me up here and say, like, oh, it looks like a nice guy, pretty harmless. But I have a dangerous side. Sometimes. I'll give accounts of the game without the express written consent of the National Football League. Uh -huh. I think Bigfoot probably has big hands also. We just never see that because he doesn't walk on his hands and leave prints. And now I'm picturing Bigfoot doing a handstand. And now I'm picturing Bigfoot participating in a gymnastic competition. And now I'm picturing Bigfoot in a brightly colored leotard. <laughs> and so are you. <laughs> You're welcome for the mental image. <laughs> Procrastinators unite! You know, tomorrow or like whenever. Do cannibals have recipes? I mean, if you make a meal regularly, you generally come up with little tips in that. You write them down so you can remember. What if they have a book, a cookbook? I mean, granted, it's probably not on the New York Times bestseller list. I hope. There's nothing that says that you can't put candy sprinkles on barbecued chicken. It's probably not good, but there's, you know, it's not forbidden. Apple has made the iPod, the iPad, the iPhone. If they ever got involved in optics, they would make the I.I. Captain. I should apologize for how bad that joke is. I'm not going to, but I know I should. <laughs> Saw a person wearing a shirt that said, I love you to the moon and back. Knowing what I know about the space program, that means that that person is saying, 
I haven't loved you since the 1970s, and it would take a tremendous amount of time, effort, and money for me to ever love you again. <laughs> It's all about the details, people. <laughs> Bought a couple Under Armour shirts. Now I asked a friend of mine to shoot at me to see how much protection they actually gave. <laughs> That's a joke. I don't have any friends. I had to pay a guy on the street to do it. <laughs> That's a joke. He offered to do it for free. I do love a bargain. The people at the emergency room are really cool about it. My insurance company, not so much. <laughs> That's a joke. I didn't have insurance. Had to pay another homeless guy to cut the uh, bullet out. <laughs> That's a joke. Or is it? <laughs> I was at a park and I saw a mother and her child and they were trying to fly a kite and it was not going well. The kid was running and the kite just sucked kept spinning around and smacking into the ground. And I knew what was wrong. The ribbon at the bottom of the kite was not heavy enough to keep the kite uh, vertical, so it wasn't getting enough lift. And I thought to myself, I can, I can tell them that. So I was about to walk over, and then I thought, wait a minute, I'm at a park. And that's a woman I've never met before, with her child. And I'm going to have to say to her, hey lady, your tail needs more weight. <laughs> there is no way that story ends without pepper spray and a call to the cops. <laughs> so that's a lesson from Jay. Sometimes you have to know when not to help someone out. And Mother's Day was a couple weeks ago, so I'm gonna tell you this little story. Uh, in case you forgot, about Mother's Day. At this point here, you should just change your name and disappear. Because I don't care how much your mother pretends that she loves you, she's not gonna let that go. And this story happened back in 2018, and I decided I'm going to bake my mother a cake for Mother's Day. I get home from work on Friday, and I turn the oven on, I mix up the batter, I spray the cake pan with Pam Original Cooking Spray, a small but important detail. Put the cake in the oven, 50 minutes later it's done baking. I take it out of the oven, I let it go for about a half hour, it's cool enough to take out of the pan. I take the pan, I have a plate, I go to flip it over and I expect to hear the happy thunk sound as the cake leaves the pan. I do not hear a thunk. Okay, okay, it's, it's just hesitant. I will reflip the cake, and it's still in there. So now I start to shake the cake, which just sounds wrong. <laughs> but it, it's, it's not coming out. And now, I do what any man faced with this situation would do. I resort to violence. I start to smack the cake down on the table in the kitchen. Gentle at first, but then with more and more force until finally I do smack the cake on the table and I hear the thunk. And I see an explosion of crumbs go all across the table. I don't wanna look. But I have to look and ah, uh, and it's bad, it's very bad. But fortunately for once in my procrastinating life, I was doing something early so I can try again the next day. Saturday, on the way home from work, I buy another box of cake mix. I get home, I turn the oven on again. I start to make the batter. I have two eggs, I need four. So I turn off the oven, get into my car, drive to the store, swearing at myself the entire way. But Jason, you don't swear. Not on stage, I don't. But trust me, I know the words. And I was using them with a high volume and creative combinations. I get back home, I turn the oven back on, I mix the batter, 
I spray the kit the pan once, twice, three times a lady. <laughs> Sorry. Put it in the oven. 50 minutes later, it's done. I take it out, let it sit for a half hour. It's a aim printer come out this. Bam! And it does come out of the pan this time with chunks still missing, but you know what? I have frosting. It'll cover that sin. Ha <laughs> ha. And I take about a half hour doing the icing. Really nice, making it a nice little design. And I put it in a container. And I go to sleep, confident that I'm past the worst of it. Sunday morning, I take the cake out to my car and put it in the back seat. Is anybody getting like a little chill up their spine at that nose? Good, you should. I'm driving over to see mom and I zone out a little bit and I look up and I see that a traffic light has turned red and I was oblivious to it. And I hit that brake pedal a little harder than I probably should. And now when I really, really don't want to hear it, I hear another thunk. There are moments in my life that will stay with me until the day I die. This is one of them. Because again, I don't want to look, but I have to look. Ah! The good news is the cake itself was still intact. The bad news is that could not be said of the frosting. And now I have a choice to make. I can either turn around, go back home, spend another half hour fixing the damage, or continue on my journey and pray for forgiveness. <laughs> and you know what? I had already called her and told her I was on the way, so that was the choice I made. Drove over to see her. Hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Need to borrow a knife so I can fix something. <laughs> and she did enjoy the gifts, the cars, the gift, the cake. But I gave her something more important that day. I gave her a story that she could use against me. <laughs> and the parents in this audience will realize that that is more powerful, that is, more, that is worth more than gold right there. And one last little thing here. Parents in the audience, I just want you to remember, tonight when you are tucking your kids in, that telling them, sleep well, or rest in peace, technically mean the same thing. <laughs> you know, scar them early, I say. Get them ready for the tortures of adulthood. <laughs> so thank you for your time and your laughter. Yeah. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Hope you enjoy the summer. And we'll see you again in the fall. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Allen. Bring it in.